Coming to you live from San Antonio at the OpenStack Design Summit. I'm here with NASA CTO, Chris Kemp. Chris, how are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for coming. Well, thanks for uh, having me. So you have been CTO of, of all of NASA now since when? Uh, CTO for IT since March, uh, actually April of 2010. So we've been doing it for about six months now. And then before that, where were you? Uh, before, I was the Chief Information Officer at NASA's Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley. And I had done that for about three and a half years. And at that point, uh, I think you were working on working with some of the code that, uh, that we're talking about here yeah. at the OpenStack uh, Summit. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So uh, about two and a half years ago, we started working on a project, which is uh, now known as uh, NASA's Nebula Cloud Computing Platform. And one of the first things that happened uh, as I became uh, CTO for IT at NASA was I got a call from the folks uh, at Rackspace about OpenStack. And we had just released some of that source code uh, as an Apache 2.0 uh, release. And they wanted to include it in OpenStack. And uh, obviously, they didn't even have to really ask me, but they, they did. So I said, that sounds great. And uh, now we've had uh, thousands of developers contribute uh, thousands of uh, new features and bug fixes to our, uh, to our code. And we've used a lot of that uh, back at NASA. So we're really excited by the uh, response to the, to the code base. And so that's on the, the, the compute side. Now, you guys were looking for something on the storage side because I think you guys might have a little bit of, uh, a little bit of storage of, of data that you, that you guys data. produce. We have a little bit of data. Can you, can you um, just put that in perspective, how much data you all have? We have, uh, across NASA, we probably have, um, we, we probably would measure our data in exabytes. So it's a, it's a, it's a large amount of data. We have um, uh, platforms like the Solar Dynamics Observatory that are pulling down one to two terabytes of data a day. Uh, we have supercomputers. We have the fastest Intel-based supercomputer on the planet uh, that can easily uh, spin off many petabytes of data uh, in a run. So uh, really, it's just a matter of how much we save, how much we have online, um, and uh, how much we have to throw away from, from all these space missions. So the more storage, the cheaper storage is, uh, the more data we can make available to scientists and also to the uh, international community of people we work with and collaborate with. And so how is NASA actually working then with the OpenStack project? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, we released this, uh, the code. We, as, as you mentioned, there was a um, really uh, serendipitous thing that happened. We were uh, about to start working on a file system project, and uh, Rackspace uh, was planning on open sourcing uh, their, uh, their storage system, um, Rackspace Files, as a, as a new project. And so uh, this provided us an opportunity to uh, not have to do that, uh, really. So we were, um, we were about to embark on developing a an object store and a file system for the Nebula project. And uh, so this, this OpenStack project allowed us to take our computing engine, combine it with the Rackspace file system engine, and have a complete cloud stack uh, foundation. So um, yeah, we're, we're just actively participating in the community. Um, we're releasing a lot of our code back into uh, the open source community. In fact, we just have been working really closely with our uh, folks back in Washington, DC to um, make it possible for NASA to contribute um, as, a, as a real partner and, and developer in the open source community by doing continuous open source release, which is a first in the federal government. Uh, and we intend to use a lot of the OpenStack code back in our Nebula environment as well. So Excellent. Two-way two -way street there. Excellent. Chris Kemp, thank you so much. Thanks.